There we go. Hi, thank you very much, Hazel. So my name is Paulina Cisneros, and I'm a career advisor here on campus. Um, I, today I'll be talking to you about your resumes and kind of what you can start to do today to prepare yourself for that first co-op job. So I work day in and day out with engineering students in co-op uh, through workshops or one-on-one -on -one appointments. And uh, the career advisors, we also are your in-class instructors for CFE, Co-op Fundamentals for Engineering. Have you guys heard of it now? Kind of? Okay, you'll be very familiar with CFE <laughs> come, sorry, come your first recruiting term. Um, so basically, I've developed a good understanding of the challenges and the rewards that come along with being in co-op. And uh, one of the challenges certainly is trying to find time between studying and looking for that first job. And it is hard, but the good news is that you have a lot of resources here on campus to help you out with that. And one of your main resources will be talking to senior students, people who have done it before. Um, so I'm very thankful to have Holden Beggs here, uh, Gabrielle Klempt, and Jason Small. So please give them a round of applause. All right, so basically on our agenda, we have a few things today. We're gonna to be talking about what employers are looking for. You're gonna hear from the senior students and hear a little bit about how their first co-op job search went. Uh, we're gonna talk about what you can start doing this summer to prepare and where to get help here at UW. And if we have time, we'll do a question and answer period at the end. Uh, because this is a very jam-packed session of information, I will ask you to hold your questions until the very end. We will have that period for Q&A. So hang in there. All right, so first of all, we're going to talk about what employers are looking for. So they're looking for relevant technical and transferable skills. Your technical skills are what you will be learning about every day in your classrooms and what you, are, what you have with you right now, uh, a great part of what got you into UW today. Uh, but the transferable skills are what I'm going to be spending most of my time on. That's things like good communication skills, things like that that you can start to develop now, that you hopefully have now, that you can start to put on your resume and will help you once you move along with your uh, co-op job search. And you also need to show that you have enthusiasm. I used to be in HR, I used to do hiring, and uh, one of the things that I always looked for was just somebody who wanted to work for me. And that sounds really silly, but if you go into a job interview and you seem really not excited to be there, like you, you can't wait to get out of there, then I'm probably not going to go with you, right? Um, I'm looking for somebody that really wants to learn and grow within my company. And also things like trustworthiness. Are you going to show up on time? Are you going to be punctual? Um, sometimes employers have certain um, pre misconceptions and preconceptions about uh, younger students. So being able to prove them right and let them, um, sorry, being able to prove them wrong, my apologies. <laughs> My gosh, I'm off to the wrong start here. Um, and um, being able to show them that you will show up on time, you will be punctual, uh, you're gonna be there every single day giving it all you've got, that's, excuse me, that's what they're looking for. And also the fact that you have researched their company, that you're actually wanting to work for them. So if you open up your booklets to page six, I'll give you a second to do that. All right, so hopefully you're on page six now. Uh, you're gonna look on the left side of that first page about uh, at all of the different skills that the employer will want you to do. And they're all up on your page, they're on the PowerPoint, uh, but they're basically going to want you to, for example, be able to show that you can learn quickly. And it's not enough to just say on the resume, oh, I learned quickly. You actually need to demonstrate it. And uh, here are some ways that senior students have shown that they 
have actually been able to learn quickly in different ways. And you, you have to start thinking of these concrete uh, ways to prove your skills so that you'll be more prepared for your resume once the time comes. So looking at those skills on that page, put a little cross next to any of them that you feel that you might need to improve. So take a second to think about any skills you need to build on that page and just mark it down. And then turn to a neighbor and tell them about how you plan to improve that skill over the summer. So take a second to do that. Since you'll be introducing yourselves and your resumes, I'm very comfortable with doing like 30 minutes on that uh, because to me it's important. Sure. Yeah, but I mean, don't don't worry about timing yourself. I will be looking at the clock, and if you're getting close to that 10 minutes, I will kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does that work? Yeah. Because yeah. you know that clock is there. Yes, this clock, if it helps, this is actually working. You have to look at it at an angle, but that does have the right time, okay. so in case you need it. Okay, thank you. Come back. Thank you. It's great to see all this camaraderie. I'm glad you are all chatting. Uh, you will definitely need to build these relationships to be able to kind of um, get that help, that social help that you need uh, to get you through those uh, first terms in engineering. So hopefully you've started to think of a little uh, action plan of how to build these skills over the summer and we'll definitely talk about that a little bit more. Uh, but moving forward, we're thinking of what employers are looking for and basically they want to see evidence of your relevant skills and relevant personal characteristics. And all of those are done mainly through a resume and of course a cover letter. But they want to see a resume that is tailored, ordered by re relevance. So if you're applying to a job in a specific field, make sure that you're tailoring it to that specific field. That you're putting everything that is relevant to that job in the first half of your first page. Generally, your first resume should only be a page. Um, and you, that first half of that first page is what resume, sorry, what recruiters are going to be using to kind of start to sort your resume into the yes, no, maybe piles. They're going to take seven to 10 seconds to skim your resume. And in that first half of that first page, you really need to convince them that you've got what it takes for this job. And that means looking at the job posting and mirroring the job posting in the resume. Uh, you want to highlight your achievements so that they stand out. Um, I know that sometimes it can feel like uh, maybe we, we haven't done anything that's too different than our peers. Uh, and especially when you're going to class with UW engineering students, you're all pretty brilliant. And it can be hard to feel like you yourself are special. But really think about the types of things that make you stand out. And don't be afraid to put those on your resume. Uh, you don't want your resume to look exactly like every other people's resumes. They want to, you need them to be well written. So grammatical errors, spelling mistakes, they are definitely deal breakers when it comes to resumes. When I used to do hiring, I myself have dismissed resumes because of this. Uh, so it's not enough to just do the spell check on Word, get a few people to look at it because sometimes Word just doesn't catch contextual kind of errors. So please, please, please go to as many resume critiques as you can, get as many eyes on your resume giving you different advice. And lastly, as I mentioned, the resume needs to be easy to skim within that seven to 10 seconds. So use bullet points, bold things that are really, really important. Um, don't give uh, lengthy paragraphs because likely the recruiters are not gonna take the time to read those. So we're gonna start with uh, actually hearing from your peers, senior students, and we'll start out with Holden Beggs, who's 3.8 Nano. Okay, can you all hear me? All good? Okay. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Holden. I'm a third year nanotechnology engineering student. I just came off of my last co-op, so I'm enjoying being back in Waterloo. Um, and I'll be talking to you a little bit about my past, my previous co-op experiences, because they've been pretty diverse. 
and hopefully give you some insight into what you guys can do now and going into your first year in order to get some really interesting jobs. So my first job was after my first eight months of school and I went back to Vancouver where I'm originally from, very late in the process. It took me a while to find my first co-op but I did it so don't give up if that happens to you. And my first co-op was at the Center for Brain Health at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver where I was working on programming, software development, some hardware development for an experiment in order to determine uh, how to minimize brain swelling. It was really interesting and I was mostly working on the programming side of it um, in a language called Python. I don't know if you're, any of you are familiar with it. And I learned it a bit in the beginning of first year, but a lot of it I had to learn on the job. I went into my interview and they explicitly said, so do you know how to do A? And I said, no, but I think I could learn it. And they said, do you know how to do B? I'm like, I've heard of that, but I could learn it. Do you know how to do C? I was like, yes, I know that. Um, and apparently that impressed them and uh, we ended up talking through it and uh, it seemed like I was a good fit and I got hired. And for the first, I'd say three weeks of that job, it was a lot of going home, looking online tutorials, reading through posts, reading through forums in order to learn this material and learn how to program what they wanted me to. And I ended up finishing the actual project they assigned me way earlier than they intended and I got to do some really interesting stuff because of that and go further on in my co-op than they might have intended. So that was really awesome, but it was all because I went into this co-op and had not totally the experience they were looking for, but I knew I could get it and they knew that too. So that was my first co-op. Um, my second co-op, um, I had a really awesome opportunity to go work at the National Institute for Material Science in Japan, just above Tokyo. Um, and I was working there for three months, working on a sensor for detecting breast samples for hopefully detecting like cancer in the lungs or the throat. And there I was mostly doing physics simulations and some experiments in the lab. And it might seem obvious, um, first of all, I don't speak Japanese at all. Um, it might seem obvious, but the biggest skill I had to learn there and I had to apply there was communication. Because I'm not joking, I went in there and in the first week they said, so this is a machine that we want you to um, get working. It's been broken for a while. And I said, great, can I see, do you have the instruction manual? They said, sure, handed it to me, entirely in Japanese. 80 pages. <laughs> Google Translate was very helpful there. Um, but it was also communicating with the employers what they wanted, what they didn't want. Sometimes we fell behind because stuff was unclear. What they wanted didn't match up with what I thought they wanted. And it ended up working out, but it was a lesson I learned throughout there to make sure I knew what they wanted and where I was able to go with it and what I could expand on and what they wanted for sure. My third and fourth co-op were in eight months. So in nanotechnology, um, some of your co-ops are just four months. Some of them are packaged together into eight months where you can do two back-to-back -back four months or you can do a single eight-month cumulative term. And then I ended up doing the latter at Harvard University, um, part of the Wies Institute in Boston, where I was working on two things. I was working on a device for ear infections to allow for the fluid to drain out of your ear at lower pressures, which tons and tons of, I think a million children a year get this uh, surgery done and it's not terribly good, so we were looking to improve it. And I was also working on a sensor in order to determine the molecular structure of crude oil samples, uh, alcohol samples, et cetera, by absorbing the chemicals into a crystal and watching it change color. So that was really awesome. That was probably the job where I had the most autonomy. It was the job where I had to take a step outside of my comfort zone and determine what I wanted to work on, very specifically outside of what my supervisor said. Because my supervisor would say, I want you to solve this problem. And I'd say, how do you want me to solve it? And they said, well, you, you figure that out. And so I had to take a lot of steps there, doing all sorts of things in the research zone of reading papers and talking to people more experienced than myself and learning how I could solve this problem. And I was there for eight months and I did end up solving the problem, um, which was great. I don't know what would have happened if I hadn't. Um, but I did solve it and we made some really interesting research because of it and they were really supportive uh, of me throughout that. That was probably the biggest lesson I learned in that co-op um, all throughout was um, solving these problems that arose without having to go to my supervisor and say, well, how would you solve this problem? I had to take a bit of autonomy for that. And I think I've grown a lot because of that. Um, why do you skip to the next slide? Like that, there you go. Um, so this was my resume in 1A or 1B, the resume I applied to for the Center for Brain Health at UBC. And so there's a few things I did well, there's a few things I did not do well. And I think I've improved on them. We'll see coming up in my next co-op term. But um, I'll walk you through it. I'll tell you kind of what I did, what I changed, what my goals were with this resume, and where I could have improved it. So the first thing that stands out to you is it's uh, probably colorful. Colorful. There's blue, there's some different shapes. I did this intentionally because when an employer has a stack of 150 resumes on their desk or on their computer, they, as you said, 
they only have around five or 10 seconds they're actually looking through each resume. They have a lot to do, they have a job to do as well. And so they'll click it, they'll scan down, if anything catches their eye, they'll stop and they'll read it closer. If it doesn't, they'll skip forward. And so I was bolding things that I found important. I was bolding things like programming experience, project experience, things like Microsoft Office, Python, JavaScript, um, professional communication uh, organizational skills. I was bolding all of these so when they're reading down, these would what, what would be jumping out at them. And I made my resume somewhat creative in terms of the design so the resume itself would jump out at them as well. Um, however, jumping onto the negative side, one thing I did not do that was also mentioned was keep it to one page. And you can go two pages. I would probably suggest one page though because it's not even that the employers don't want to look through two pages, which they don't usually. Um, but if you look at my resume, if you look on the left-hand side, I say a few things. I say that I have programming knowledge. I say that I'm good, I've worked in a team to develop an ion propulsion system. That was one of the design teams in first year I did, which I would highly recommend you join a design team. It's fantastic experience. Um, and I'm proficient in Microsoft Office, all of these things. I've done lab experience, et cetera. And then if you look on the second page, I say all of the same things but just more specifically, I say that I have program experience, I say that I have project experience, I say I have lab experience. I say all the same thing. And I was saying this because I didn't want to end the, the second page halfway through. I didn't want to have a bunch of blank space. But it led me to just repeating the information. What would have been better is pair out some of the information that wasn't really necessary. You don't really have to have all of your educational history there simply saying you're from the University of Waterloo and a few key courses is probably good enough. And compacting my resume down to what actually mattered for the job would have been way better at communicating the information because when you're applying for these jobs, you have your resume and you have your cover letter. And the resume is what they first look through and the resume is supposed to grab their attention. It's supposed to say, wait a second, this person looks qualified for this job. They look like someone I'd be interested in working with. And then the cover letter is supposed to give them the hook to draw you into an interview. And in the interview is where you get the job. So if my resume wasn't good enough to hook them and say, hey, you might be, I, uh, this person might be applicable for this job, they would just pass it by. And so moving forward, I condensed my resume into one page, streamlined a lot of it, put my experiences right up front in my summary of qualifications and relevant experience, and left my educational history and interest closer to the bottom. Although you can see at the very top right-hand corner, I do have that I'm in nano. Um, so that was kind of the way I designed my resume. Um, did you have anything you wanted me to talk about at all? Cool. Um, so that was kind of where I went for that. And you're constantly changing, constantly updating your resume. Um, Sika has fantastic resources in order to critique your resume. They actually said going into second year, they sat down with my resume and they said, so you should probably condense it to one page. And I said, that it doesn't seem right. Two pages gives more information. They said, but you're saying a lot of the same things twice. I said, well, that's right. And I did that and I got my second co-op in Japan. So part of this is working with Sika and working with people who know what they're doing and know what other people have done in order to be successful, in order to be successful yourself. Um, and so far it's been working out really well for me and hopefully that trend continues. Hopefully I'm not peaking now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll be happy to take questions at the end of this. Hi, so my name is Gabrielle. Uh, I'm in geological engineering, but I'm here to talk to you more about the civil environmental geological side of things. Um, so as you can see, my um, I've had four co-ops already. Um, I'm in third year. So what our program is the four um, four stream program. So we don't get an eight month co-op like uh, nanotechnology students do. We get four months um, on repeat until fourth year when we spend eight months in school. So. My first co-op, I'm gonna be real with you, I had a very difficult time getting my first co-op job. I think I applied to all 99 of the co-op, of the jobs that you could apply for on Waterloo Works in your first round, and I got two interviews and I did not get a job. And uh, I struggled through continuous and I got my first job and I was super, super happy. This term, I applied to 14 jobs, I got seven interviews, and I got four offers. So that's just, to let you know that things start out really rough at the beginning. And I'm gonna let you know why. It's because you don't have any skills at the beginning, really. Especially if you're in forestry stream, you've just done four months of school and you're like, yeah, I know so much stuff. And you put that all on your resume. You're gonna see in a second, my resume has a lot of stuff that I did in first term. Um, employers don't really care about that stuff. And um, they, they just want you to have a lot of soft skills at first. You have to apply to a lot of junior positions at first because 
you need to develop those skills in the workplace that you're going to then put on your resume and use to get jobs in the future. So at my first job, I did a lot of learning quickly. I was with the Ministry of Transportation, and I was working in, first they stuck me in the shipping and receiving office, where, which was attached to their aggreg aggregate testing facility, where I did aggregate testing, and then I received packages, and I signed for things, and then I would do some more aggregate testing, and I would clean supplies, and then it was, it was a lot of learning on the job. I was reading a lot of instruction manuals, and then um, they brought me upstairs to the office. They were like, cool, you've done a great job here, but we need you in the office. We need you to write a, a report for us. And I was like, OK. So then I just started writing this report. that They, they told me, OK, you're going to get all the information by calling all these contract assistants and getting information from the people building road projects. And I was like, OK. Now, I know, it's the 21st century. We're not super comfortable calling people on the phone. I did a lot of calling people on the phone for that job. And I know I didn't put communication on there, but I learned a lot of communication from that as well. And at the end of the work term, I produced this report, and I presented it at the quality assurance officers meeting. And it was a really great accomplishment. And I put that on my resume, and I got asked in that. I got asked about that in every single interview that I did afterwards. Everybody was like, oh, what did you present at this quality assurance officers meeting? What was your report? And I got to talk about that. So that was, again, you build on your resume constantly. Um, my next job was with the um, Natural Resources Canada. Again, it was not specifically geological engineering. I was doing a lot of um, work with information systems. I was doing a lot of work with environmental management systems, but I was communicating a lot with my group because we were a very small group in the office. And I was trying to implement changes to their systems that they were working with. And not everyone is super re um, receptive to changes that they've been um, on systems that they've been working with for ages. So I had to work a lot on my communication for that job. And then my next job, I got completely by chance because one of my profs was talking about this position with the Ontario Geological Survey. Um, in class, and I thought, oh, that sounds interesting, and I totally forgot about it. And one day, I was sitting in our geological lounge, and um, one of my friends was applying to the job, and I was like, oh, what are you applying to? And I said, oh, I'm applying to this job that our prof told us to apply to. And I said, oh, I want to apply to that. So I did, and I got a call, and the guy said, how would you be interested in working in Terrace Bay, Ontario? And I said, where's Terrace Bay, Ontario? And he said, do you know where Sudbury is? And I said, sort of. And he said, OK, well, it's about 10 hours from Sudbury. <laughs> And uh, so I went up there, and I was able to put to use a lot of skills that I had learned in the classroom that term. I had just taken a structural geology course. And in first year, you take a mini mineralogy uh, geological course where you learn about rocks. And um, by the end of that summer, I was identifying rocks and minerals with ease. I, I could you know, break a rock with one hit of the hammer. I could carry 40 pounds on my back. It was great. I had so much fun. Um, and I definitely learned a lot about teamwork because our team was five people. We were living in the middle of nowhere. We had no cell reception. We barely had internet. And you learn to get along very well with people that you live with without cell reception. Um, and so my last co-op term, uh, the past one for, uh, that we had in January, working with the Toronto Transit Commission. And I was really excited about this job because I'm from Toronto and I know a lot about the TTC. I've been using it my whole life. And I kind of wanted to see what the inner workings of the TTC were like. And I was also working in their geo, uh, geotechnical engineering office. And so that's like pretty close on the nose of what I'm studying. Um, and so I was super excited about that. And I went in and sometimes office jobs are a little bit slow. Sometimes government jobs are also a little bit slow. And that's just because processes happen that way. Um, in the government, things take a little bit longer. City council you know, changes its mind a lot. <laughs> and um, all the same, I learned things that I'm actually learning in class this term. And I'm sitting in class and I'm going, oh, I don't even have to copy this down because I was doing this last term. So I think that's really something that you can get through co-op that's fantastic. and. Um, it's just one of the great things that we have at Waterloo for the opportunity to get. Um, so this is my resume. You're probably going to notice, um, first of all, that it's two pages. Uh, my resume is still two pages. Uh, and that's because I have a lot to say. <laughs> 
but you're also going to notice that it's just very black and white. Um, things are small, text is hard to read. Um, I also put that I'm in first year, which I wouldn't really recommend doing on your resume. They're probably going to know you're in first year from your transcript anyways, but no need to advertise the fact that you're in first year. <laughs> Uh, I also put my name on the second page for some reason. I put page two and, as though there were more pages. Um, but the reason that I do two pages for my resume is because I have a lot of volunteer experience and leadership experience that I like to talk about. And I like to, I, I like my summary of qualifications to be short, only about five or six points. And in those points, I put a lot of soft skills and a lot of technical skills that I have. And then in my resume, I can describe like, where those skills come from. Um, so things like time management and organization. Well, how do I have time management and organization? I was the editor-in-chief of our newspaper. And then later in my volunteer experience, you can see I don't have that there. <laughs> All right, so there are a lot of problems with my first resume. That, um, that's why it's a work in progress. Um, I also didn't have any um, actual work experience when I, um, oh, it's under leadership experience, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, that's a little bit weird. Um, definitely by, by now my uh, resume is quite differently organized, but the only work experience that I had in first year was uh, being a tutor, and um, that's not on my resume anymore. But if that's all you have, then you can put it on there. I chose to put it after my leadership experience because I just thought that my leadership experience expressed more the skills that I have, all those skills that are on the page that you were looking at earlier. Um, they're all kind of in there and not in my work experience. So that's just, yeah, some things to think about. Thank oh. you. And we'll move on. Uh, hello. Um, I'm Jason Small. I'm a third year student in systems design engineering. Um, personally, I think in my co-op journey might be in some ways different from Holden and Gabrielle's um, in the sense of like co-op being more process to lead to I want. Um, going into um, 1A, since systems design is also a four stream pr program, um, looking into like a first job, I would say like I'd say I probably did about average in the class in terms of getting a job. Um, what I had essentially was a hook in, in that I had something, like I think a key thing about getting a job is having something that stands out compared to the other candidates. In my case, with this specific computer engineering job was I had somewhat of a background with Linux. That was something that a whole lot of first year students wouldn't have. So that's what got me this particular job. Once I, this job, I would say, to be honest, was a really bad job. <laughs> it, the work was, yeah, fine, I'd say it's boring. It was dealing with servers, it was dealing with networking equipment, setting it up, and to be honest, the actual work environment, not the best. <laughs> but overall, it was a learning experience. I gained a lot from. I, I certainly gained some technical skills, but I also, in other stuff, in terms of communication, like I did a project where I was working with this major telecom company as a client, so I had to interact with them. I had to prepare a plan, I had to present it to them, and then, and then as I went through the project, I had to give them regular status updates, make sure I kept them satisfied. So I'd say that's a very important thing I gained. I also gained communication skills within my own workplace. In my workplace, it was largely a language barrier in that like most, while this was a job in, here in Ontario, a lot of the work people at the company were Chinese speaking. So that was its own communication barrier to DOS that I think I gained a lot from. Um, going into my next term, um, when I was in 1B looking for my second work term, that for me, like most people will actually have their most trouble with their first work term. For me, that was the one that I had the hardest time finding a job. I ended up finding it after the term was over, after exams finished for that term, one week later is when I got a job. It was a long process. It had, I think I had about 25 job interviews during that time period. The reason it was is because that's when I was trying to jump. My first job and my work experience before Waterloo was all in IT. I wanted to get out of that. So this was, 
So basically, it took patience, it took trying all sorts of different things in order to be able to get some other job for me. However, in the end, even though there was a long process, there was agonizing time, it was worth it. I had this quality assurance job, um, Q4, which is essentially this small fintech startup. Um, for those that don't know, quality assurance is basically um, like searching for bugs, trying to improve a software, find mistakes. So that's why I said you know, diligence is by skills. You basically have to try searching in everything. Um, you have to think of like anything that could go wrong, how you can test it, how you can cover it. So I think, yeah, I think one of the fun things about that job is you actually are supposed to criticize other people's work. <laughs> <laughs> like actually tell people, oh yeah, wait, no, this thing doesn't work the way it's supposed to, fix that. And they actually will fix it. <laughs> so yeah, I'd say that, that four months was a really fun time. And then following that, um, I moved, like it's often a typical path for people who want to work in software that sometimes they'll end up starting in quality assurance. And then, so then after that, the term afterwards, I ended up getting a developer job at SAP, which is this really large company that develops like um, database software, among other things. Um, and for that job, one important thing was that because they're a large company, they're based around the world. And in the case of the work I was doing, it was like me and my supervisor in the Waterloo office that dealt with that aspect, along with a team of people in the States and, and the number of people in other continents. So I'd say collaboration is important because it was like what I was doing was just one teeny component that had to work with everything else. And to work with everything else, it had to work with people who are working in other countries. So it was important to like talk to them, but also like understand and to think, realize when you're doing something, even if there's a certain way you think is best, that you have to deal with how other people are doing things. Because if you just try doing something your own way, it won't work with everything else. So you can certainly bring up your issues, but at the end of the day, it's important to understand that you have to make sure your thing works with what other people are doing. And then, so finally, after all three of these work terms, I basically decided I don't want to do this software stuff. I, there's stuff that I like about it, but there's also things where I find get tedious. And transportation is kind of the field I'm trying to go into now. So with this last work term, was it, I basically went into with that to, for job searching that I want a transportation job. So I actually started, yeah, applying intensely. Um, cover letters was something where like, at the very beginning, my first term, I never wrote a single cover letter, which is pretty common around here because you're applying to like 50 jobs, maybe 100 jobs in the course of the whole term, so you're not gonna write 100 cover letters. But as I started to get into like transportation jobs, because I really wanted them and because I didn't quite fit the full skill set, I started writing cover letters. Um, I made sure to make them tailored to the job, I talked about my interests, and then I basically used it as a way to link how all my past jobs, despite seeming unrelated, how their skills can contribute to what I was doing now. And then I ended up getting this job as a transportation analyst where I was basically doing um, what is called traffic simulation with software. So in a way it kind of hooked up with my existing computer skills, but it was also in a new field and where I managed to learn a ton. And there was also interesting challenges um, in terms of how to handle data, how to run the system and such, which is why I mentioned problem solving as an important skill for this job. So I'm now going to go to, this is my 1A resume. Um, I think there's some different approaches to what holding Gabriel here. For one, it is a single page. Um, I took the approach of making sure I made it short and I made it tailored. In fact, I actually in 1A had several different versions of my resume that I tried to apply different jobs. Something you might want to do, you might not. It does become a bit of a hassle, but it's worth considering. In any case, what's important is I actually did prioritize stuff. I started with skills that looked relevant, that kind of match what was listed in job listings, because they'll like the job listings will always have a set of like requirements, and it's best to look at those and like try and match your resume up to those. Um, and then I did also a mix. I started with some technical skills, but then ended with some soft transferable skills. Um, in my case, I actually had, well, one previous summer job and one volunteer job, um, so I listed those. Of course, many first years don't. If you don't, it's fine. Um, I'd say you, oftentimes in this space, you talk about like self-projects is another thing you can cover. Um, and then I ended with the academic side of things um, with that. So I'd say um, some of the weaknesses of this resume, for one, is 
in contrast with, say, Holden's, it is very dull looking. There's a million resumes that look like this. Um, it might not stand out. Um, I also think that what I wrote, a lot of things I wrote didn't really get support. For example, I write there that I have adept problem solving skills, but there's not really anything in this resume that supports me having those. So it's like one of these things, like anyone can claim something. You can claim that. You can claim you can learn quickly. It's a matter of supporting it. Um, so I'd say, I'd say, yeah, there's kind of like a disconnect between what I say my skills are and what I'm actually supporting through my experience. So I'd say that would be another, yeah, key thing to adjust. But key things that I think do well, it's about relevance. Yeah, that's all right. All right, so you're probably thinking or wondering about what you should be doing before September. So first of all, you want to start researching about employers in the field that you're looking for. Start uh, maybe thinking about employers that you want to be targeting, the kinds of jobs that you would like to do. Um, keep up to date. So start actually following the news, reading blogs. Um, LinkedIn is a great place to find out about new things. Whatever professional uh, websites there are or associations that they are, that uh, are re relevant to your field, start doing that. Uh, reflect on those skills that you build in your high school courses and then any extracurriculars um, so that you can start to build your resume. Uh, for example, like Jason said, um, making sure that you're actually backing up the different claims that you're making. Uh, you want to start to really think about your skill gap, analyze which skills do you need to build and develop, and then start to actually build and develop those skills. And we will talk about how you can do that. And you want to make sure that you're creating and updating your uh, resume and cover letter. Um, depending, uh, um, if you are for stream particularly, job postings start to come at you fairly quickly. So you want to make sure that you at least have some skeleton of a resume and uh, you know what you're going to put in it so you're not starting from scratch in September. Um, so if you're wondering how to build those skills in the summer, um, you can either get a part-time job through networking or talking to people in your field. Um, there are different job posting websites listed there. I want to draw your attention to Talent Egg. That's a specific student website uh, where you can get find student jobs, co-op jobs, um, jobs for when you graduate. Uh, keep that one in mind. You can look for places to volunteer at. And of course, even start looking at online courses. And I'll give you a second to jot those down. Lastly, I want you to know that there is a lot of help at Waterloo for you. You are not alone. Uh, so first of all, there's Co-op Fundamentals for Engineers, that's CFE. Those are the in-classroom uh, courses that uh, will help you kind of navigate the co-op process. Uh, you also get resume critiques with WEF TAs. Uh, all of this will be in your uh, resources booklet, so don't despair. Uh, the Center for Career Action has appointments and drop-ins for resumes, cover letters, and uh, especially in your first recruiting term, meaning your first term where you will be looking for a job, uh, you can drop in any time, basically, during the week to talk to career advisors uh, to get help in navigating the co-op process. And um, there's also the Engineering Society Resume Critique evening sessions, uh, where you get your resume critiqued by senior engineering students. Uh, Watt PD, uh, which is something that you will be doing during your co-op terms, will give you some skills uh, about professionalism, things like that. And of course, there's a co-op information center at the Tatum Center, uh, which is also where the Center for Career Action is. Okay, so we have about five minutes for questions <laughs> um, right there at the back. What was the process? So the question is, what was the process of getting international co-op experiences? So my experience differed slightly from the regular experience of getting international co-op experience. Uh, most students who get it, get it through the Waterloo Works uh, 
uh, program that's part of Waterloo's integrated uh, co-op searching. And there's some international experiences on there, and you apply to them as you would any other job. Certain things will give you a bit of boost if you have a passport in that country, et cetera, if you've worked in that country before, if you speak the language, et cetera. My experience was a little bit different. Actually, most of my co-ops, I didn't actually get through Waterloo Works. I got them through networking and emailing on my own, this one in particular. So for my Japan job, I um, heard about it through uh, the nanotechnology Facebook, actually, where some older nanotechnology students who would work there were um, talking about this job and saying, uh, you know, if you want, you can send us your resumes and we'll forward them to the supervisor. And I did that. And then the supervisor ended up coming to Waterloo to do a lecture. And so I went to that lecture, and as everyone should do if you go to a lecture like this, I stayed afterwards to ask questions and talk to him and interact with him. And we connected really well, and he asked for me to forward my resume to him personally, and I ended up getting the interview and getting the job. So international co-op experiences, some of that it is on Waterloo Works, some of it is just taking those opportunities when they arise and don't say, well, I could never get this, it's too outside of my sphere. Go for it anyway and have that initiative and sometimes you'll get it, yeah. A quick note as well that we do have empl uh, international employment specialists at the Tatum Center. Um, that can really help you as well um, uh, in terms of any of the paperwork you need or if you have questions about visas, things like that. Um, we do have that resource for sure. Yes? Okay, thank you. Uh, so the question is, um, how do we know if a job um, can be approved for co-op, basically, if it's outside of the Waterloo work system? Is that correct? Um, so I'll just tackle this one quickly. Um, basically, if you go on the co-op website, there are the six requirements of an arranged own job. Uh, we do try to make that process as simple as possible for students. We want to see them employed. Um, so as long as the job uh, is comparable in some way to your field, and is full-time, you're not employed by a family member, uh, things like that, then um, there is the whole process there, and co-op advisors can definitely help you with that. Uh, but it's fairly straightforward, and if you think that a job looks like it's a good co-op job and it's the right length, um, just talk to the career advisors, and they'll give you more information. Thank you. Yes. I will also tackle this one very quickly. Please don't include references on your resume. <laughs> um, references are something that happens after uh, the interview maybe, even after you get employed sometimes, um, but in the references you should not be including. Mo most of the time they're uh, around two or three. Any? Rarely do employers even ask for it within the Warley Work system. Yeah. I think the only one that like, consistently mm -hmm. does is um, the Canadian Nuclear labs and they usually ask for like a couple and yeah I think that's the only one I've ever applied to that's required any references. Yes? So the question is approximately how many clubs we should include in a resume? Anybody? I do a lot of extracurriculars at the university. I'm involved in absolutely everything I can be and I include the ones that I think give me the most relevant skills. So I'm probably not gonna put that I volunteered for this co-op panel because while this is enjoyable and I'm glad to be here talking to you, um, it's just, you know, it's an hour of my time and um, it's probably not something I'm gonna put on. But an extracurricular like the Iron Warrior, which is the engineering newspaper, it's something that I've been involved in since first year. I write for them uh, weekly. And, well, it's a bi-weekly newspaper, bi-weekly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's something that you get communication skills from. And yeah, so that's why I include it. We have question of time for one more very brief question. And I'll go to somebody in the back right there. Uh, Plaid, yeah. Um, so the question is about fees, particularly probably the co-op fees. Um, in terms of the resources available to you on campus, they're all free of charge, but certainly the co-op fee is uh, something. I don't know if any of you want to talk about it. Um, like it is just one more fee on your tuition. Um, like it's one of these things that seems like a lot, but when were you getting for it? And after, after all, you're getting a lot from your job themselves also, so. Really utilize the services that Sika has to offer because a lot of a lot of people think that the only thing that the co-op 
um, center has to offer is Waterloo Works, but you can go in and get your resume critiqued, you can get cover letter advice, they can even help you find a job off of Waterloo Works if you want that. So, yeah. And one last thing about the fee, I wouldn't worry about the fee too much because I'd say co-op is easily the most useful part of this degree and easily the most fulfilling part. I've learned way more in any of my co-op experience than I have in probably the sum total of my classes, so I'd say it's well worth it. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.